Lizzo is not just uh, denying the claims of her three former backup dancers. She's now preparing to take legal action against them as this whole thing plays out. Uh, the legal action she wants to take is uh, suing them for malicious, uh, for malicious prosecution. We, we will get into the snag there, but we'll, first let's right. get into yes. the new video that we got. Because um, Lizzo's legal team believes that these uh, photos and video you're about to see Prove that the backup dancers who are suing, all three of them you're going to see are in the group. This is all of the big girls. That's her dance troupe. And Those they, are the three women who are suing. And they were at the Crazy Horse in Paris. In fact, in their lawsuit, they make reference, as they put it, being forced to go to this show at Crazy Horse, which, if you don't know, is a uh, burlesque show, a very famous burlesque show in Paris. So this was them after the show, and you're going to see... In particular, one of the women who's suing is right up front. Listen to, I guess Lizzo's team would say, their excitement uh, at being at the show. Big girls at Crazy Horse! Ah! Now, Lizzo's lawyers say that they certainly don't seem like uh, people who were forced to be at this show. Uh, and I guess their, their side of it would be that even if they felt forced to go to the show, why would they be so excited to do this video? Their, 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 position. their position is, look, our boss wanted us to go to this, and they're saying we were uncomfortable, but we had to put on this face. The problem with that argument is you could say that about every interaction with that looks positive on the surface, and sometimes a cigar really is just a cigar, and they might really or be just... Or in this case, a banana. Or, or a banana. Sometimes and, a banana but, but, <laughs> but, I mean, in this case, they could actually be happy. I mean, and that's what a jury is going to have to decide when they start looking at this. Um, we showed you video um, four months, shot four months before um, they filed this lawsuit, where one of them is just singing Lizzo's praises. And, you know, at a point, um, is a jury going to say, they're always kind of held hostage off camera there, or are they are changing they their tune because they ended up getting fired? And I think that's gonna be the rub there. Yeah, I think you're undoubtedly right that these pictures and these videos are helpful to Lizzo's defense at a minimum. They do show the, the women having fun, reveling, sort of carousing, but power dynamics can be tricky, and it's possible that the women's lawyers will be successful in saying, you have to sort of put on this show, you have to look like you're having fun, or else we were worried that we might lose our jobs. I think it makes his job more difficult to prove that out when you see these videos. Hard for a jury when you see, like, excitement and happiness and everything else, but but to, uh, and they may do it. But I know. But their, but their point, the dancers' point, is going to be, yeah, we had to be smiling. At this. The same reason we felt we had to go to the show is the same reason we felt that when the camera was right. on us, that's we argument. had to do this smiling. And you're that's, right. That's and, the argument. But then you could say that about every single interaction that it's not real. It's not what you think. And sometimes it does create an issue where you, if you're if you're the boss, then you know that any interaction with your employees outside of just being in the office, and certainly when you're in the office, but even outside of the office, becomes problematic, potentially. Well, right? it, it does. Now, I, I just want to say something about this malicious prosecution, the threat of a... Right. It, they could only do that. You can only do that if she prevails in the lawsuit the dancers have filed against her. That's number one. And number two, and this is the even harder part, is that you have to prove that the lawsuit was motivated solely by malice. And even if, if there's anything that's le remotely legit, even if they lose, you can't win in a malicious prosecution lawsuit. So that is an uphill climb for Lizzo. Hello, uh, my name is Atila Schnapka. I'm a CEO from Los Angeles. And uh, my opinion to this is, I think all of it is sort of uh, reality, you know? Uh, they were half forced, uh, they, they half enjoyed it, and so on and on and on. So uh, I guess it will be settled outside of court and uh, money will be, you know, part of the deal and that's it. But the thing is, if you're uh, in a position like she is, you shouldn't even go to such a, a burlesque show or whatever, you know, not, not to get into such a situation. Right. That's the first thing, you know. And so, yeah, if she had avoided all of that, 
then we wouldn't be talking yeah. about it right and now. I, and I guess that's the lesson that I mean, even if Lizzo wins the lawsuit and doesn't end up paying any money, um, I think she's certainly learned a lesson about what she's going to do with what the what, what, what the barriers are with right. socializing and working. Right.